All right, let's try this again. Hello everyone and welcome to our Easter basket um, mini crop for today. We're gonna do some really fun stuff. I'm using the really rainbow six by six paper pad from Lawn Fawn, but you're absolutely welcome to use any six by six pad that you have. Or if you have 12 by 12 paper that you want to cut down to six by six, you absolutely can. So we're going to start with, once you've got your six by six square, you need your scoreboard. So you're going to pull that out. You're going to get your scoring tool ready. And you're going to put your paper flush in the corner. We are going to score at two inches and at four inches. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I heard an uh-oh. If everybody could please just put themselves on mute for right now, and then if you need to ask a question, um, unmute yourself and say, hey, Sherry, I've got a question. And then that way we make sure that um, any of that ambient noise doesn't uh, yeah. interrupt. What were we scoring, Sherry, there we at four? We were scoring at two and at four. Okay. So at the two inch mark and at the four inch mark. I'm going to try something. Hold your horses. Hold on to your seat. Let's see if I can bring this down a little bit closer. Okay. Hopefully, I'm going to get us a little bit closer to be able to see things. So, we're scoring at two and at four. Then, we're going to turn. It doesn't matter which direction, but you're just going to turn one turn. Question. Yep. Which, uh, which side of your pattern paper, like if you want to be facing out, do you score on? I score on the pretty side, the side that you want facing out. Um, again, if, if you know me, I'm not really particular about what side I score on generally. Um, if you want the paper to be, I think, I think the pretty side is the right side so that you're folding into the mountain. Yeah, so when you're going to fold it, that mountain is going to be on the inside. Does that make sense? It's hard to see on this paper. So you see how I've scored it. This is the wrong side and it's got the little bump. You want to fold towards that mountain. Perfect, thanks Sherry. You're welcome. But again, I'm generally not very fussed about uh, where I score. I'm not, for, for all the things that I am OCD about, that's not one of them. Um, as long as, you, I mean, people get to know their paper, so hopefully that will, as much as I'm not being very helpful, we'll figure this out. All right, so we've scored it at two and a four. We're gonna rotate 90 degrees. Again, doesn't matter which way, and we're gonna score at two and four again. So now, essentially, we have a tic-tac-toe board. We've got three squares across the top, three squares down the side, so you've got nine squares in total. Now, again, it's not, doesn't really matter which side you do this on. We're now going to score just in the four corners. So we're going to score in, let's start in this top left corner. We're going to score at five eighths of an inch and one and three eighths of an inch. So, five, so if four eighths is a half, it's the one tick past the half inch mark and you're only going down to that first horizontal line. See if I can hold it up. You know what, let me grab my pen. So if this is our square. You are only scoring down to that first little uh, horizontal line. That was at five eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna do it again at one and three eighths. So one and then three little ticks. Whoops, I pressed too hard. Essentially you want three little even strips in each corner. Two, three. We're gonna do the same thing over on this corner. So leave this one here in the top left. We're gonna come over to this corner right here. You're only gonna score to that horizontal line. This time it's at four and five eighths. So that's four and four eighths, four and five eighths. And then five and three eighths. So 
So five, one, two, three, here. So again, if you've got your little box, it looks like that. You're not drawing the pen lines, I'm just drawing it just so it shows up better on the camera, but you want your two top corners to have three little strips in each one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it a whole 180 degrees. So now your little squares and your little strips are at the bottom. You're gonna do the same thing to those two top corners. So just to repeat down to this line, you're gonna score at five eighths of an inch, which is just past the halfway mark, and then one and three eighths. So just to draw it on here for you. And over in your top right corner, you're gonna score at four and five eighths and five and three eighths. So now your paper should look like that without the pen lines, just with your score lines. Next, you're going to take your scissors. Sherry, can I ask the measurements one more time? I've got, I've got a score pal, so I don't have all those lines on my score pal. Okay, not a problem. So you're just right from, well, to start right from the beginning. You're going to score at two and at four. All yeah, I got down. those. Okay, the little ones are um, five eighths. Okay. One and three eighths. Uh huh. Four and five eighths. Five yep. and three eighths. Okay, I'm gonna have to invest in a better. I've got the old score pal. It only gives you half inches and inches. Oh wow. Yeah, look at it. It's horrible. That's the original. There's no uh, little mini lines in it anywhere. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, definitely, if you're going to do a lot more um, 3D stuff, a lot of places, some, some even go down to sixteenths of an inch, which I think is insane, and I try never to make you do sixteenths of an inch. But the eighth of an inch, especially when if you're taking a pattern from the UK and they've converted the measurements from metric into imperial, those eighths of an inch really do come into play. Okay, yeah. perfect, thank you. You're so welcome. All right, so everybody's good with scoring. Now we are going to cut. So you're gonna grab your scissors and you are gonna follow your vertical lines. Do not cut the horizontal, okay? So we're just gonna cut here. Oh, my fingers are jumpy. So we're only cutting on the vertical lines following your score lines. All right, and do that on all four corners. So once you've done your bottom ones, flip it all the way around, and then you're gonna cut again only on the verticals. I almost feel like I should have music in the background, but I read some articles and they say, be careful about what music, because if you're not licensed, you can get dinged. Maybe I'll get my son to come play his baritone in the background. Not that he would be happy about that. But anyway, so once you've got it cut, you've got your six little strands at the top, your six little strands at the bottom, and you've got two solid squares. We've got to do a little bit more cutting. I'm going to draw it with my pen first, just so you see. You're going to find the center point on this middle square, and we're going to cut triangles out of it. So if you see my little drawing here, we want to make triangles because these are going to make the little triangle that go in the center of your basket. You don't need to score it unless you feel like you really can't uh, cut a straight line. 
but I just drew that there to show you where we're going to go. You're going to go right down into the corner. And you know what? If it's not perfectly centered, it's not going to affect the mechanism of your basket. All right. All right, so now our cutting is done, our scoring is done, and we've got this really funky looking shape here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just fold on all of our little score lines, just so that when we start putting it together, it goes together really easy. All right, and you can put your scoreboard aside as well because we're done with the score. All right. So now we're going to flip it so that we've got the inside facing us. Your triangles, you can make sure that they're out of the way because that's the last piece that we're going to do. And essentially what we're just going to do is we're going to start taking our from the outside and working our way in and building our basket. So let me, I'm going to bend those out of the way just for right now to show you. So these two outside tabs, we're going to fold up and we are going to adhere it. Try, this is the, the real foundation piece. So you want to try and keep it as level with each other as possible. So I'm just going to grab my tape runner. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just on the end there. Oh, I got a little bit more than I wanted, so fold it over. And then I'm going to attach it like so. So that is the foundation for the uh, top ring of the basket. And then all you're going to do is fold it. So next you're going to take the next two and you're going to fold those up. Don't worry that it, le that it overlaps a little bit because we can trim those off. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape runner behind each one of those tabs, fold it up, fold it up, and there's the next rung of our basket. Do the same thing with your third little tabs. And you're going to fold it up and fold it up. This is where I'll now turn it over and I'll just take my scissors. See if I can show this. Here. Sherry, could you slow down just for one minute? Absolutely. Thank you. My apologies. Sherry, I'm, I'm missing that whole part of folding. Mine is just looking like folding overs. It's not like going on an angle. Okay, uh, Kathy, can you hold it up to the camera? Okay, so if I'm folding like this, yep. and then that one goes like that. Let me back up. Or maybe, okay. No worries. Let me back up. I went too fast. So with your top, your top strips, don't just kind of do, you, you, you want to overlap it maybe about three quarters of an inch. Okay. So maybe it's just that your tabs weren't overlapped enough. Okay. Okay. And then as you pull it up, even be deliberate about putting that point, hang on, let me get the camera right, so that it overlaps. And you've got a little point sticking out the top. Okay. Okay, did that work for you? Yes, thanks. Okay. Okay, then you do, so you do that with your next two rows and then your third rows. The first side is harder. Once we get the second side done, move to the second side, it'll be pretty uh, stable at that point. 
And then, like I said, this is where I'll go in now and I'll just trim off my little points that are sticking above that area. And then the last thing you're going to do is you're just going to put a little bit of tape here and fold up your point. And that just finishes it off. You can either tuck that over or trim that as well. The nice thing about this project is we have a second side to do, so it gives you more practice. So I'm going to put a little bit of tape on my horizontal tab, overlap them about three quarters of an inch. All right, and then I'm going to do tab number two. And oops, fold it up, fold it up. All right. Do tab number three and tab number three. That's okay. We'll, uh, we'll fold it up. Fold it up. Trim right. off your points and attach your triangle. Sherry, I just have to say hello, and that's a, this is adorable. Just Thank you. adorable. Hello, Tina. Hello. So the other thing that I noticed after I did my sample ones is you can use these for Easter baskets, and I'll show you how to do the finishing steps next. But I have also seen it. See if I can. If you've got a baby shower coming. If you take two of these little basket pieces and put it like so, add some little circles, all of a sudden you have a baby carriage. Oh, that's so cute. So this technique can be multi-purpose. And that's probably one of my absolute favorite things to do about crafting is take something, learn how to do it the original way, and then figure out how can I repurpose this for other things? Because you know what? You could do these all out of orange and they could be little half pumpkins. You could do something like this and, or they, so they could be full pumpkins. You could do them in red and they can be apples. I don't know. I think that's where my creativity really starts going nuts. But let's, since it's Easter, let's get back to our Easter basket. All right, so here is your basket as it stands right now. This is where you need some little scraps of paper because what we're going to do is we're going to, and your, sorry, my brain is going way faster than my mouth. We are going to cut two circles from some scrap paper. It can be the same color. It can be a contrasting color. We're going to punch two circles. Oh. Oh. These are going to be your little anchors, just like this, that just hold and finish all those points together. Now, my original ones, I use Tape Runner for these, and I find that mine keep popping. So I would recommend, and what I'm going to use is a liquid adhesive this time, just to keep them nice and closed. Or if you've got score tape, it's just been, it'll be a little less annoying. Um, if you use a stronger tape. So I'm gonna take my circle, I'm gonna fold it in half. Sherry, what size of circle is, are you using? I used a one inch. If you've okay. got one and a quarter, you're probably good. I don't know that I would go too much bigger because it's gonna come out and cover up all of your pleating. I have them all. I just needed to know which one. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm using the one inch. <laughs> So take Thank a little bit, little bit of liquid adhesive. And I'm going to just sandwich that over top of that intersecting point where everything has come together. And you're going to do right. that on both sides. That's why we punched two circles. And again, like I said, if you're doing the baby carriage, you could use those same ones for the wheels. 
Sherry, are you going to post the video after to uh, re watch the replay? That is the intention, yes. Okay. I'm still figuring out how to get these um, up onto YouTube, so it may not be today that it happens. But at the beginning of every week, what I do is I set three must-do tasks for myself for the week. And that's the last one on my to-do list for this week is to figure out YouTube. So that's part of what I'll be doing tomorrow. Thank you. I missed the beginning because I had to use call. And also when I said hi, Sherry, my Sherry Ann. Sorry, I can't, I, I'm, I'm not sure who's talking and I can barely hear you. I said thank you. And also when I said hi, Sherry, my Sherry answered the <laughs> Oh, no worries at all. No worries at all. All right, so I'm going to take my second circle. I'm going to fold it in half. A little bit of glue. Sandwich it on. Squeeze it, let it set and dry just for a second. There we go. So there's the bottom part of our basket. We are almost there. The last thing we have to do is attach our handle. So for this one, what I did is I just cut two strips that were a half inch wide, and then I attached them together. Because when I, so I'm using just again scraps of my six inch paper. When they when I just did one six inch strip, it just wasn't long enough. It made the basket look really silly. But I'm gonna grab my Upper here. I'm going to cut two pieces that are half an inch wide. Here, one. That looks bigger than half an inch. What did I do wrong? Yeah, my first one was too wide, so let me cut one more. So again, I went just I just went back to my tape on this one. I put a little bit of tape on one end. Overlap them. And then just with a little bit of tape, or you could do a little bit, little dot of liquid glue on the inside. Oops. Flying baskets. And your handle. Goes like so. And there you have it. Now, again, if you feel that that's too long, you can always trim it down. That's so cute. So, super, super cute. Super, super easy. You can see we've done that. We What have we blown? Well, I guess we've been about 20 minutes, but it's all good. So, there's that one there. Now, I told you I would do a couple of different variations. I really just have one other variation. It's a little bit simpler than this one. You're welcome to follow along if you wish. We're gonna grab another uh, six inch or a six by six piece of paper. I'm gonna do the purple again, just cause that's what I've got handy here. We're gonna start off with the same scoring. And actually I should stop. Is everybody good for your space and time? We finished our first one. I just jumped right into this second one here. All right, silence is good. Hey, um, Sherry. Yes. Can you give just to get stuff out? I'm sorry? Can you give us just a second to get some more stuff out? Absolutely. Thanks. I am absolutely able to do that. So six inch square. While you're at it, if you want to cut a four and a half by four and a half inch square from a separate piece of paper, that'll be the third one that I show you. Sorry, what scoreboard are you using? Mine is contraband. You can see that's why I've got my name label over the uh, name. This was a close to my heart one. Okay. I, I don't know that they make it anymore. If there's a close to my heart person on here and they want to confirm or deny, that would be fine. Um, my my big one that I have, I've actually left it at home. So, good Sherry, there. you're too funny, contraband. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The second square, what were we cutting it? 
So you want, right now you want one square that's six by six and one square that is four and a half by four and a half. Oh, I lost my video for some reason. It's because somebody's trying to call me. Your photo, uh, profile photo on this is very cute though. Thank you. That is from the RISE conference that I went to at the beginning of March. Oh, there's my screen back. Um, it was, so if anyone knows Rachel Hollis, she is an author and motivational speaker. She puts on a women's conference and um, that was probably the last big event that was anything uh, before everything happened. It was the first weekend of March. It was three days and it was probably the most amazing three days that I have um, participated in for something like that. Absolutely phenomenal. Her name was Rachel Hollis. Her book, or her first book was called Girl, Wash Your Face. If you are looking to take something out of the library or looking to download something to read, definitely I would highly recommend that. Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. Girl power. And that uh, girl power in the background. So uh, she used to be an event planner before she became a motivational speaker. So all of us scrapbookers who went to this conference were in absolute heaven because they had signs everywhere that you could take your picture with. They had little decals on the uh, bathroom mirrors that said, hey, beautiful, or, you know, look how awesome you look. They're really empowering messages on the, on the glass for the, uh, the bathroom mirrors. There was absolutely no shortage of photo ops. So, and they had, I think, at least four different photo booths that you could go and visit and get your picture taken with. It was an absolute scrapbooker's dream. So nice. Yeah. Anyways, are we all yeah. good with our six by six? I have one quick question. You bet. I am trying to fit this into a basket. Okay. Is that you, Carolyn? Yes, that's me. Okay. Yeah. All right. But the basket, of course, is too small. So if I wanted to try to make it bigger, would maybe nine by nine work? You could absolutely go to nine by nine next. And then if that still doesn't work, you could go to 12 by 12. You want it to be divisible by three. Okay. And, All right. Um, That's what I thought. Thank yeah. you. The, the, the divisible by three seems to work the best. And when we go to the smaller one, I'll show you how I, I changed the measurements. It would work just the opposite way uh, to go bigger. So all right, we're back to our six by six. We are going to score again at two and at four. And I'll use my pen just to show you my lines again. Just like the last one, we're gonna rotate it 90, 90 degrees and do it at two and at four again. But this time, that's all the scoring that we're going to do. You know, we can put our scoreboard away. And so, we'll the one. so on this one, all we're going to do is cut again our vertical lines. So I'm going to cut here. Well, it's long scissors. Here. Here. Flip it 80 degree, or sorry, 180 degrees. So with this version, we are only doing four cuts. Now we're gonna fold on our score lines. And again, if I'm going too fast, please shout out. I'm happy to repeat. I'm happy to wait. Hello, somebody has their, doesn't have their mute on, so it's muffling you when they cut and stuff. Okay, thank please. you. If everyone can please mute their cameras, if you know how to. Check my little list here. All right, I think that got everything. Hopefully that's better. 
All right, so now we have our little squares. And again, we're gonna turn it so that we've got our, our cuts going vertical. All we're gonna do this time is fold up like so. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape behind this corner, a little bit of tape behind this corner. Did I actually get tape? No, I did not. So same kind of idea where we're going up on an angle, but this time our centerpiece is gonna be our foundation. So fold up a little bit like that and fold up a little bit like that. And that's it. This is the easy version. Then you're gonna flip it over, do the same thing. Little bit of tape on each of those inside corners. So I put tape here and here. Fold up one, fold up the other. How's that for an even easier basket? Then you would go ahead and cut your strips to make your handle. Come on, fingers. And again, this was too short, but you would just tuck it inside like so. So there we go. Things on chat here. Oh, Tori is saying that the audiobook of Girl Wash Your Face is really good too. Um, and thank you, Tori, for the tip on mute. I think I got it. All right. There we go. So there's basket number two. Next, I'm going to walk you through the tiny basket. So I'm gonna take one more square and you guys went ahead and cut this at four and a half by four and a half. I haven't done that yet, so bear with me. So the key to sizing up or sizing down, um, as I was saying to Carolyn, is really just remembering that you want these in threes because so we can have our nice even tic-tac-toe board across our um, across our square. So because this one is four and a half by four and a half, I'm gonna score at one and a half and one and a half and then rotate and do the same thing. All right. One and a half and then at three, because that's that way it's one and a half, three, four and a half. Rotate 90 degrees. One and a half and three. Now this one is actually a little bit easier to do the little sub lines because if you now take your one and a half and divide by three, you've got half inch across the board. So I'm gonna do half inch and one three and a half and four. I'll say that again. So we've got our one and a half and three, then we're gonna do each little corner half an inch across. So half an inch and one, three and a half and four. Rotate 180, half inch and one, three and a half and four. Sherry, is that on both sides? On both sides, top and bottom, yes. Okay, thanks. Basically, whatever you do to the top, you're gonna do to the bottom. So just show you here. So Carolyn, if you were going to nine inches, you would do your, your first scores at three inches and at six inches, and then each of your little scores would be one inch each because you can just take that three inch square and divide it by three. If you're going up to 12 inches, let me do the math, you'd be scoring at four and at eight, and then each one of those corner squares uh, this is where the math we get dice is four, it'd be four divided by three. So it'd be one and a third 
and then two and two thirds. It might it might it might get a little tricky at that one, but uh, you get the idea that you, that you're doing a third a third, and then each corner is a third of that again. So we can now take this. We can do our cut. Oh, sorry, I did forget this one. We want to do the triangle. So again, if you're marking that, you've got your little triangle, like so. Everybody still with me? Silence is good. I can really see these little guys being addictive. That once you start scoring and once you start put them together, you can really assembly line these. Oops. Snip. Snip. My mother-in-law would like to have a Zoom tomorrow for Easter with our family and Matt's sister's family, and she'd like us to do a craft. So this might be something that we could do on Zoom, that everybody would have the supplies. Though, if I had managed to get two teenage boys to make an Easter basket, well, I need to go buy a lottery ticket. Because I don't know that that would really happen. Matt told me to just keep dreaming. Though we did have quite a spirited game of you know last night. So, you know, I think the kids are looking for interaction and ideas too. All right, here we go. Now that I've done my small talk, fold along my score lines. Let's fold my triangles back out of the way. Fold these guys out of the way just so my fat fingers don't get in the way. All right, so with your smaller one, just overlap it a little bit. Hold it up and show. Then tab number two. Hold it up, hold it up. Tab number three. Come on. Oh no, I didn't. Oh. I am making a mess of my tape runner today. That's not like me. I think that even if you ladies weren't sitting here watching me, I'd probably still be talking to myself. Does anybody else talk to themselves when they craft? No, I watch Netflix and then get distracted watching <laughs> Netflix and never finish anything. Oh, yeah, I do that too. I talk to myself all the time, not just when I'm crafting. <laughs> well, at least you're somebody that will listen. I'm the same, Tiffany. <laughs> What's that? I'm the same. I talk to myself. It's because we need an expert opinion. There you oh, go. You got it. You got it. It's when as you long as, ladies, as long as you don't start arguing with yourselves, you're all good. <laughs> Yeah, because when it's yourself, it's hard to say, do I need to separate the two of you? <laughs> do I need to pull this car over? All right. Moving right along. So you can see once you've done, the, it's like a lot of projects, once you've got that first one done and you've figured out all the little tricks, it is super easy to make more and more and more because you've got the hang of it. You find all the shortcuts. And so there, there's our little teeny tiny. Oh, I've got a little bit of purple left here, so I'm going to punch my... So again, I think with this guy, you probably could get away with staying with the one-inch punch. Um, it'll just give you a little bit more coverage than you did with the big one. If you have a smaller punch, then absolutely. 
go for it. Folding my circle in half. Little bit of my glue. How stinking cute. Now, like when we did the, uh, the little birdhouses a couple of weeks ago, you absolutely could go to town and cut out some little Easter bunnies to stick on the side or do some little flowers. You could really decorate. Oh, I forgot to fold this in half before I put the glue on. That's okay. The peanut gallery is yapping at me in the background here. All right, so my little circles. I'm going to cut my strips. I like this trimmer better. Maybe this time I'll do slightly narrower. And you know what? For this little guy, maybe just a one inch strip will work. Or a one or one one strip as opposed to two. So let's just tape this on. And there you go. These would make great little, not that we're having fancy Easter, well, maybe you are having fancy Easter dinners if you've still got um, peeps at home that you are sharing Easter dinner with. It'd be really cute if you wrote each person's name on it. It's a little place marker at their, their table setting. Fill it with some little chocolate eggs. Um, all kinds of things you can do. So there you go, ladies. We can make Easter baskets. This one didn't get a, a handle. Let me make a handle for that guy. So cute. Thank you, Sherry. You're very welcome. This is awesome. Thanks, Sherry. This is great. It's always fun to make stuff with your friends, and I'm glad you all could join along. And Y'all, apparently I'm now Southern, but that's okay. <laughs> Y'all. 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 It's very Y'all. cute. Thanks, Sherry. You're so welcome. So as, as was asked Thank earlier, you. I'm hoping to figure out how to get this on YouTube. It's absolutely adorable, Sherry. Love it. Thank you. Well, again, they're super easy, whether you do just the simple square version or whether you do the pleated version. You can do a mix and match, and when you start getting all the different colors and things going on, you can have a lot of fun with it. And uh, happy Easter. Let's happy hope. Easter. Happy yeah. Easter. I, I did read that the Easter Bunny has been deemed an essential service. <laughs> yes. So you never know what you're going to find on your doorstep. Are we going to do something next uh, Saturday at 1? Absolutely, we are. Okay. Yay. Yes. And my dairy, my plan is to do these every Saturday for the foreseeable future. Um, what I did when I set up the Zoom for today's class is that I set it up with the same meeting code. So if you still got it from today, oh, uh, so let me just pause the recording because we don't need to record this part. <laughs>